Hello everybody. <laughs> Hello everybody. Crit Crab here with another story and this one is about a DM that had to exact revenge on a deceptive and cheating player by using the cheater's own tactics against him. Also, I have a huge surprise for anyone who is brave enough to power through this cringe until the end of the video. Anyways, that aside, roll post. This one is kinda old, but one of my favorite moments as a DM because it is eye-rolling, hilarious, and I feel demonstrates my skill as a game master. We were playing Pathfinder, rebooting a previous game with some new PCs at about level 6. We have a fire wizard, a rogue, a two-hand fighter, a life cleric, and a gunslinger. Gunslinger ended up being the big problem. He started using the game with a created magic item that let him use the blink spell three times a day. In Pathfinder, Blink makes you flicker back and forth between the material and ethereal plane for the duration. This, understandably, does a bunch of shit. It makes all physical attacks have a flat 50% chance to miss, makes all of your attacks have a 20% chance to miss, lets you move through solid objects that are less than 5 feet thick, reduces damage you take from area of effect damage. It's a strong spell. This immediately starts causing problems first fight is against a marauding pack of gnolls on their way to the real objective. From the get, he's running into the middle of combat, blasting both pistols, heedless of danger due to his blink item, the way he checks for it. He rolls a d10, saying nothing, looks at it, and then informs me whether it missed because of the blink. And, wouldn't you know it, almost every single attack against him is consumed by the blink spell, but not a single one of his is. Imagine that. I ask him what the system he's using is, whether it's highs or low, odds or evens, what numbers he's using for his own attacks, etc. He says, highs I missed, lows I miss. I tell him that's a little confusing and ask to see his next roll. He rolls his eyes but agrees. Next attack against him hits. He rolls immediately, picks it back up before I can see and tells me it's a miss. I remind him that I said to see his roll, and he informs me, you need to be quicker, just get the next one. Now, I'm a pretty permissive DM, but when shit like this happens, the gloves come off. I told him to re-roll it, and from now on, any concealment, displacement, bullshit, mischance rolls that I don't see don't count. I informed the rest of the party about this, and they agreed. All except for Gunslinger. He argues that combat already takes long enough, and that he feels targeted, blah blah blah, I told him that the only other option is I roll everyone's mischance myself, and he shuts up immediately. I have him re-roll the blink chance. It comes up a 2, and he says, see? The thing missed me. I look at him, almost glaring. Dude, what did you say to me before, about how your system works? He rolls his eyes again and says, highs I miss, lows I missed. I inform him that that is wrong. I confer with the other players who confirm what they've heard that he literally just said the opposite a few seconds ago. He immediately goes on the offensive. You're all ganging up on me, this isn't fair. I told him that, from now on, any attacks on him that score low misses. Any attack he makes that check low also miss. And that we're going to be consistent and easy. No more of this shifting goalpost bullshit. He argues for a second, but I move on. Sometimes, as a GM, you just have to put your foot down and move on. Right near the end of the fight, someone shoots an arrow at him and he throws his d10. It comes up zero and he says, missed, nice try. I say to him, dude, that hits. The hell is wrong with you? He looks at me with this kind of tired anger. You said lows miss. That's a zero. That's low, you idiot. No, that's a d10. Zero on a d10 is a 10. As in one more than nine. As in hi. Are you f***ing with me right now? He tries to appeal to the rest of the group to back him up, but that just does not happen. Though he is able to waste 10 minutes of my time arguing that 10 is less than 5. So, that's a thing. So at this point I am super done with this. We just started and already I have cheating, players challenging my calls, a dumbass attempt at gaslighting, and we're maybe 2 hours in. I don't want to ban him for various out of game reasons, but I need to do something about this. So I decide to alter the adventure to make things a bit more... interesting. Their adventure was to go and look into a village that had to be abandoned due to... what they were told were a bunch of ghosts. 
They talked to a few escaped villagers who spoke of monsters appearing out of thin air and attacking them. They got a few pairs of goggles that would let them see immaterial things from a local witch. They then set off to go look into it. They get into town and start poking around. They make some perception checks to look around, find some odd husks. One of them finds a locked bathroom with a dead guy in it, and no window someone could have attacked from. They look around with the goggles, see no ghosts, and assume the spirits must come out at night. They rest until nightfall, and follow after some movement they see in the square. As they approach, something monstrous attacks Fire Wizard. They all roll initiative, Gunslinger pops his item, and then it all comes together. Originally, I was planning on playing the adventure straight, just having a bunch of ghosts infesting a village that the PCs had to clear out. I replaced those ghosts with spiders, basically a mating pair of phase spiders, an ambush predator that weaves the smoky stuff of the ethereal plane into tangled nests and jaunt through the plains to attack their prey, sort of like a trapdoor spider, except instead of springing out from an obscured hole in the ground, they pop out of thin air and are the size of a horse. So the party is getting attacked by a couple of these things shifting in and out of the ethereal plane. Fire Wizard is hitting them with magic missile. Two-Hand Fighter and Rogue are holding actions and landing strong attacks on the things when they shift back into attack. And Life Cleric is healing up anyone who gets ambushed. As for Gunslinger? <laughs> well, Gunslinger is dying. Remember how Blink works? It causes a target to bounce back and forth between the material and ethereal plane. The ethereal plane is where these things live, and that's where their young are. The baby spiders are similar, but still the size of a large dog. Since he's the only one on the ethereal plane, he's the only one they can attack. By round two, Gunslinger is being mobbed by a horde of ravenous spiderlings and nobody can help him. He rips off the item that lets him blink, but... I tell him that item lets him cast the spell, not that the item is the source of the ongoing effect. He starts demanding that Fire Wizard or Life Cleric cast Dispel Magic on him, but they're too busy fighting the mature spiders. They keep attacking him for the whole fight, eight of these things constantly surrounding him, around four hitting every round on account of the blink spell, still halting 50% of their attacks. I have a wonderful opportunity to describe Gunslinger popping around the battlefield, gradually growing more and more haggard as the tiny spiders are ripping him to pieces. One time a critical, making one of them hang off his face when he shifts back into the material plane. After a few rounds he dies and I have great fun describing his flickering body gradually losing mass as the baby spiders start eating him. And I actually get compliments on how evocative I managed to make it. Gunslinger's player is pissed and sits there fuming with rage for a good portion of the fight, until he abruptly grabs his stuff and leaves, taking Life Cleric with him because they rode together. I ask Life Cleric's player if I can control his character for the rest of the fight, and Gunslinger's player answers no! I get a text about 10 minutes after they leave from Life Cleric's player that tells me I can and the fight finishes out with victorious players. We finish out the session with the remaining players actually using Gunslinger's magic item on the entire party over a few rounds so they can clear out the baby spiders and burn their nest. Everyone says it was a fun adventure and we go home. Later that week I get a call from Gunslinger's player and he demands that I retcon his death because he feels he was targeted unfairly. This is absolutely true, of course, but I tell him that I will do no such thing. He quits, and the game is better for it. My favorite part about this story is that the spiders hitting the village ended up being an interesting twist that I managed to foreshadow effectively despite pulling it out of my ass literally minutes before they encountered it. This still gets talked about sometimes, and it was conceived entirely out of punitive bitterness. TLDR? Player abuses a homebrew magic item, cheats while using it, whines when DM takes steps to mitigate his bullshit, so I feed him to a swarm of devouring spiders that can only target him, inadvertently creating a legendary adventure my other players loved. End post. Well, sometimes a DM's gotta do what a DM's gotta do. While any holier-than-thou commentator will say that the DM obviously could have broke down that situation and gave the DM a bit more of a mature way to inform the player in question that their repeated disregard for the rules is unacceptable, I would be lying if I said that that takedown was not super satisfying and deserved. Anyways, 
If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more stories just like this one. Till next time. Bamboozled again! Our trusted allies over at Easy Roller Dice reached out and asked me if I wanted to help spread some D in December cheer. So, how could I refuse? As you can see, they sent us three sets of metal math rocks, two self standing leather light dice bags, and one large and spacious Phoenix dice tray, all to be given away to you guys for free. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can I get my claws on such highly sought after items? Well, it's quite simple. Simply make the journey to my Twitter page, follow our mighty and benevolent allies over at Easy Roller Dice Co., and stake your claim in the comments section of my post. Now, the items pictured here don't even begin to scratch the surface of what they have to offer. They sell far more amazing products than just what you see here, and as someone who has been using their products in my home games for quite some time, I seriously cannot recommend them enough. Their commitment to high quality products at a low price sets a standard that you can't find anywhere else. Now, I get that some of you may think that I'm just hyping these guys up and saying it for a quick paycheck, but I am being paid literally zero dollars to say any of this. I am being 100% genuine when I ask you guys to at least check them out. You will not regret it.